Welcome to the suburbs with Andy and Greg. Have you ever had chicken knuckle soup? Ooh, that sounds disgusting. It's so good. <laughs> Just the title itself shut me down. (laughs) Anytime you have knuckle in the recipe, I'm out. There are feet in the soup. (laughs) Now I want to go get sick. No, you should try it. It's really good. No, thank you. Did the chickens wipe their feet before they were butchered and (laughs) lost them? I mean, that's that's the one thing I would want to know is like, surely you did clean those feet before you put them in the soup. (laughs) Because there's a lot of stuff going on in that chicken yard that you don't want to have in the soup. Before you chopped them off and threw them in. So Jennifer and I went to dinner with another couple. Jennifer uh, is a politarian. Not a pescatarian. Not a presbyterian. But a politarian. Is that a voting? No. Chicken eater. (laughs) She's a chicken eater. I gotcha. Usually her go-to is a chicken dish. And she orders chicken parmesan the gentleman with the other couple he decided to reveal parmesan the meals come and we're all sitting there chit and chatting and i look over at the guy to my right and he's just going to town on this just cutting this and he's just like this is delicious and i'm looking over to the left of jennifer and she's sort of dissecting her meal <laughs> with a strange look on her face trying to maybe she has a little bite and then she kind of hmm Still more dissecting going on. No way. She's like, why is this so gray? And I look over to this other guy, and he's like, man, this is the most tender veal. I could cut it with a fork. It almost tastes like chicken. And I'm like, uh, I think it is chicken. And I look over at Jennifer, and she's got <laughs> the veal parmesan. Hold the veal. <laughs> <laughs> chicken knuckle soup would have been better at that point. <laughs> we were down in Florida for Super Bowl weekend in Sarasota, which was a lot of fun just to see my my sisters and my parents did you guys gamble have any kind of poll on who was going to win and no i think we just kind of were you know we had the teams we were rooting for out on the table i guess since jennifer and i were both dressed in kansas city shirts we were made it a clear <laughs> statement who we were who wanted to win <laughs> okay um, did you go buy those at the goodwill no 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 we we have a closet full of uh, uh sports regalia really yeah Huh. Do you have, do you have, okay, so are you like Imelda Marcos closet except it's sports clothes? <laughs> kind of. Is it? <laughs> kind of. Kind of. It's like the uh, walk in closet of the guest room. Yeah, exactly. Full. full. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of everything. I have all my IndyCar shirts. She has all of her sports shirts. And nice. Yeah, so we're down there um, having a good weekend with them. And, and my dad says, what? they were remodeling their cafeteria. So let's just go downstairs to this little area where they have some sandwiches and hot food set up similar to a cafeteria but it's just a, a meeting room there's eight of us lining up so that this woman has, sort of looks at us like oh boy this is a mob and <laughs> eight eight is a mob so jennifer's first in line and and she, she says to the woman uh, does this chicken salad have onions in it <laughs> she took a big scoop and stuck it under her nose and says you tell me really and jennifer's like Oh, I think it's okay. I'll have a half a sandwich then and a bowl of soup. Hold the knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> and so she, so Jennifer gets her sandwich. So she's the guinea pig. So she's, she's the first one to get this woman's wrath. Oh, wow. Jennifer has had a scoop of chicken salad stuck under her nose for <laughs> analysis. So she gets her half a sandwich. You I know. smell dill. Yeah. <laughs> I'm passing on this. And then we order uh, paninis. <laughs> <laughs> hot sandwiches Wait, you like the other side the other, yeah like more of two or three of us and so this lady gets out of radio and she goes i need anybody with a pulse down here to give me a hand <laughs> just <laughs> freaking out wow and so we we finally got through the lunch line but this uh the you put her in the weeds yeah it, it really yeah put her over the edge to have eight people in line with and, paninis yeah and but uh, <laughs> is that even a thing at a retirement community do they do paninis yeah it was on the menu it was, oh, it was. Oh, yeah. Well, oh. We just didn't like pull it out Special of the air. Special order. Yeah. We, we can't go to Panera, so we're going to have it here. <laughs> what kind of steaks do you have? 
<laughs> I have the kind that I'm going to drive through your heart for asking. <laughs> I raised the child that barfed on the school bus. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> the school bus had to pull over. All the kids had to get out. I got a phone call. I had to go pick her up at the barf site. <laughs> <laughs> Was it a banana split? <laughs> well, it split the crowd. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Everybody off. We were on a bus ride in Europe, and... Somebody was getting sick on the bus. You know, nobody spoke English, but when somebody was getting sick, they stopped the bus. And every the international symbol of get off the bus was was raised. Everybody off. Because this person was going down. Uh, I'd forgotten about that till you mentioned the your bus story. It was like everybody off. Scattering. It was. Climbing through the window. It's like the place is on fire. <laughs> We know what's happening. <laughs> right. <laughs> when we were, we were in Hawaii on our honeymoon, we took a, a boat ride to go snorkeling. And they had a mimosas and a spread of food. And we had taken Dramamine. And so we were, you know, feeling the Dramamine. But it was it was working. Mm-hmm. Other people were just drinking and eating. And <laughs> it was a pretty rough ride. Okay. And all these people that had been eating yes. and, and drinking. <laughs> Or just chumming the water. Hanging over the edge. <laughs> it might have been on the way there because some of the people were so sick, they didn't even snorkel. They were just sitting on the boat with a cold rag on their forehead. And we were doing well because we had taken the medication. We didn't eat. We just ate. You know, we knew we just wanted to try to maintain. Because yeah, I know it was on the way there because it was it was against the wind going and we're thinking, God, this is going to be a long way back. And it was like half as long to get back after we got done snorkeling. But I just... All these because people, of the boat weighs less. <laughs> it's people, these green people hanging over the side. <laughs> On our honeymoon, we went to Alaska. We went to Denali. Week one was a cabin. So we went hiking around. And it's June. So it's daylight all the time in Alaska. Sure. And we would be out in the middle of the mountains and then look at the watch and it's like 10 p.m we're like oh my god we gotta get back it's bedtime it is bedtime and uh keely's there and there's a we're walking toward a glacier that was the whole thing and so we're walking along this stream that's coming from the glacier and she says i am so thirsty Uh uh-oh and I said, well, look, I mean, this is like a Coors commercial here. Crystal clear. This is, yeah, from the glacier. It doesn't get any more pure than this. It doesn't. And uh, guess what? does get more pure than that. (laughs) She dipped in. She took big drinks. And then Jardia or whatever you get from that set in. And the next couple of days were rough. (sighs) (laughs) Well, you guys, I know, backpack avidly, and you guys do treat all your water and pills and filters and whatnot. Yes. Yeah, so. There there was one on the Appalachian Trail where we were um, hiking toward a mountain. We're almost out of water, and through this pasture-ish, it it wasn't a pasture, but it kind of had that look. Uh, and I and there were minnows all over the place, and I just thought, okay, this is going to be the one stream that we filter our water from where it tastes like minnows. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like a bait store smells, you know? And it didn't. It didn't at all. It, it filtered out everything. I could not believe it. I, I thought for sure, okay, this is going to be the one. This is I the big, go. big cool glass of bait water right that's what i thought it was going to taste like i can see the label on the filter and it's you know it's thicker than a brat but not as long Mm -hmm. and screws into uh, it's got the regular thread so you could screw it into like a A bottle a bottle Mm -hmm. or the bag that it comes with and um, and then you just squeeze it through, or you could let it percolate if you had the time. You know, for for what you're using it for, probably that you know they've researched and they've you know they've deemed it to be safe and effective. Safe and effective for for hikers, right? Or who whomever. 
And a lot of or the camping, stuff, I guess camping too. I mean, people yeah. are doomsday people, <laughs> <laughs> preppers, <laughs> right? <laughs> we want, want to see my 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 storage barn versus full of sea rations. Yeah, mm, delicious. Uh, I don't know that it it filters out <laughs> radiation. radiation. <laughs> <laughs> Post apocalyptic. <laughs> yeah, that could be bad. Well, I'm here at Three Mile Island, and yeah. <laughs> this water is still glowing. It's delicious, but my hair is falling out in clumps. <laughs> so there's a restaurant in Broad Ripple uh, called Tin Star, and it was styled after the old Wild West prisons and jails, kind of like what you would see, I guess, on the old Andy Griffith show. <laughs> yeah. Ernest T. Bass. Yeah, Ernest Bass is in the prison next to you. Right. And uh, he's sleeping off a drunk. And we're eating tenderloin sandwiches. (laughs) Actually, Grace is eating chicken fingers. Um, And so so she grows into this professional ballerina. I mean, very graceful on stage. But she I can't tell you how many times just walking down the hall, she would stub her toe. Or she would be, we would be at the dinner table, and she would somehow fall out of her chair from a seated position. (laughs) Oops. You've got the regular way that people see with their legs bent and your feet down in front of you. Sure. Normal. And then all of a sudden you're on the floor. Gravity takes over and knocks you out. I'm down. I back up. <laughs> so we're in prison. She's having her chicken fingers and I'm having my tenderloin and she falls out of the jail cell. <laughs> like through the door, out of the jail cell, coke every place. And she's like embarrassed because people are looking at her and she does she wants to leave after that because everybody's looking at her and i was like <laughs> you, fell, you fell through the jail cell door you still fell through the bars <laughs> yes she fell through <laughs> from a bench seat in a booth how do you do that Ta-da. and then pirouettes i'm fine i'm fine no veal parmesan in that story <laughs> So this was starting to remind me of a conversation I had with my dad about he had dial up and an AOL email address. He's the one. Yeah. <laughs> if you look up AOL in the dictionary, there's just his picture. It is his picture. And underneath it, it says Casanova. <laughs> Lover. He's got this as his avatar. <laughs> the heart. I heart you. He's got that t-shirt. I heart you, Joan. <laughs> so anyway, he, uh, he's got dial up and I said, dad, you should get DSL. Was this like last week? <laughs> <laughs> DSL. Your emails to Joan would go so much faster if you, if you got DSL. He could print them and put them in her mailbox quicker. <laughs> Yeah, his uh, his idea of a screenshot is taking a picture with his phone of the screen. <laughs> but then he doesn't know how to send it. <laughs> anyway, he's got dial up and he's complaining about how slow it is. And I said, you should get DSL. And he said, I don't want to get another phone line. And I, I said, you don't get another phone line. You get a router and, um, and it, it becomes... You could either hardwire it or you can be wireless. That's not what it is. I said, Dad, I've got it. I've had it for years. I've worked from home. I use it. It's not a separate phone line. DSL stands for dedicated service line. And so you have to get another phone line. And I said, I'm not going to argue with you about what I already know to be true because we do it. So why don't you just call the phone company and understand? And you know what he did? He did. He he called AT&T, the only one available in his area. And lo and behold, you can get internet without running another phone line. Say it isn't so. I can't. I can't say that. It'd be so. It do be so. Did I get a, hey, you know what? That was a great suggestion. Thank you very much. <laughs> no. Not a grumpy response, I'm sure. Well, now the grumpy response is he, he let them run the, um, the wiring for the modem to the corner of the house that's the furthest away from everything else that would need the internet. 
Oops. He comes into his bedroom in the hinterlands of the house, far, far away from everything else. And so he has to have a range extender in the middle of the house to be able to pull that signal so that he can send Joan a love note or stream stuff on Hulu as long as it's logged in. You know, my dad, very smart man. He was on a Mac computer, I think, before I was on a Mac computer. You love him to death, but, you know, sometimes he'll ask me those questions. Where do you find this or where do you find that? And so I'm happy to just look it up and tell him versus saying, Google it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm blessed to have him in my life, and I'm blessed to be able to help him with his putting when it comes to <laughs> how many episodes will there be of this show and when will the new season come out? <laughs> Okay, let me just look that up for you, Dad. You've now succeeded in making me feel guilty about talking about my grumpy father the way I did. Now I want to call him. You're going to make me cry again. I'm going to call him. I'm sorry about the things I said about you on the podcast. Podcast? You got a podcast? <laughs> when I was, gosh, I'm not sure how old Heather would have been. Probably in grade school. I was living in my house at 48th and Allisonville. One of our Subarus, we were selling ourselves, and we put it in, who knows, Auto Trader or something. Maybe even the newspaper back then, you know, the one ads. Oh, my gosh. We were looking to sell this car, and, and her mom and I had decided, okay, what's what's the lease we'll take for this car? And we said, okay, 1500 15, That's the imaginary $1,500. So this guy called and said, you know, interested in that car? Okay, come on over, take a look. And so we had it out in the driveway, all cleaned up polished and shine ready to sell and guy walks up he's looking around and he seems like he has interest and he's like well, what's the least you take for this and heather blurts out 1500 <laughs> well okay well i guess that's the least we'll take <laughs> because we were going to start a little higher than the, the bottom <laughs> the bottom line <laughs> the negotiation process was uh, was not discussed with heather Figured she wouldn't just blurt out our magic number. <laughs> Let me tell you a little something about sales. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did your hand immediately go over her mouth? Oh, I think you need to go play with your Barbies. How old was she? Probably grade school. Did this guy take that as the negotiating number from a kid? <laughs> I think we sold it to him for fifteen hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because we really just wanted to get rid of it, and we had someone, you know, we had a fish on the hook, and we knew we, you know, we would we would take that. This is the blurting out of fifteen hundred. <laughs> I'm driving home from mom's, and I always like check in with my dad several times a week. So on the drive home, I gave him a call, and he said. Oh, I've been thinking about you, and it hasn't been good. That's what your dad said? Yeah, that was his hello. Nice setup. Okay, where's this going? <laughs> Waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah, and I, I go, uh, okay, what is, what is that in reference to? And he, he said, my Hulu doesn't work. <laughs> it's an international crisis. Because, you know, I am the CEO of Hulu. Did you know that? Yeah. Were you aware of that? <laughs> Did not. Yeah, the CEO and tech team of Hulu. <laughs> it's scrolling through photos and show suggestions, and it wants me to join. And I go, and this has happened en enough. The first couple of times, I was puzzled by it, and I thought, okay, let's troubleshoot this. And that's where the whole FaceTiming thing came into play, and he's just totally incapable of FaceTiming. And so I'm trying to troubleshoot, not in front of the TV, not seeing the screen that he's seeing, and <laughs> and he's not helpful because he's not as tech savvy. And he's grumpy about it. Oh, my. Yeah, he always waits until he's totally upset before he calls me. So he's at the end of his rope, and that's when I get, rather than, oh, hi, I love you, I get, yeah, I've been thinking about you, and it's not good. <laughs> Why haven't you called me to, so I can tell you about my Hulu issue? My mental telepathy must not be working, and it's your fault, too. <laughs> and so I said, Dad, we've been through this multiple times. You're not seeing the login. And he said, that's because there is no login. And I said, yeah, there there is. You're just not there. So why don't you scroll down? And lo and behold, 
there is a login. Shocker. <laughs> and so then he said, oh, so it's asking for your email address. And I know that that's greg at dot com. <laughs> They're missing a couple characters in there, I'm sure. Let me back up to say he couldn't get the keyboard up on the, <laughs> on the screen. And he's like, well, I don't even know how I can type with this. So I said, you have to use the circle button in the middle of the fire stick. And if you're pushing on the left-hand side, you're arrowing left, right-hand side, arrowing right. And enter is the center of the button. I know that. Okay, well, you haven't known anything else. <laughs> So I'm just going through this with you. <laughs> he had this epiphany of, of intelligence and then degaussed himself again. Yeah, don't tell me. Don't tell me what I already know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and meanwhile, you know, I'm I'm driving on I-69. I probably went through Fort Wayne just trying to get the keyboard up. <laughs> when I was coming home after my conversation with my dad, this semi went by me and I'm I'm not hundred percent sure but i'm reasonably certain that it was hauling death <laughs> I, you know and i don't know how much you get paid to haul death maybe 666 a mile <laughs> i think this semi i mean either they were hauling dead cows from that catastrophe in texas or dead cows that had soured like they were trying to make it was some kind of korean dish that had gone wrong <laughs> because it passed me and i've never smelled anything like it in my life and i mean you know you'll occasionally come upon a roadkill or something and you'll go wow what died and you're like oh was it was it, was it was it worse than chicken neckel soup chicken neckel soup is delicious it's Peruvian, I think. Still hung up on that one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they trim the nails. So, you know, the, the <laughs> well, that's different. <laughs> oh, well, then <laughs> bring me a bowl, please. <laughs> Hi, this is Andy. If you enjoyed listening to our podcast, please be sure to subscribe and share. Remember, laughter is contagious. Help us spread it by telling a friend.